Hey everybody, it's John Lemazny. So, uh, this is the first video in the uh, Neckbeards Network series of videos that is going to focus on design. The reason that I'm doing this is because um, I recently had a job change and I'm going to focus more on design and consulting. As a result, I'm going to use this uh, medium in order to talk a little bit about design and uh, hopefully interest people in uh, taking me on as a consultant for technology and graphic design. So today is a way of starting that conversation. I thought that it would be interesting to uh, show you some of the books that I love uh, because I wanted to give you a little bit of a bibliography to give you some sense of who I am as a designer and, and uh, also to start this discussion. I'm seeing this video as um, an ongoing discussion about graphic design concepts, technology concepts, and uh, ideas for consulting. And I also want to use it as a little bit of a uh, way of describing the consulting experiences that I've had issues that I've run into and how those things were resolved and to um, more or less just make connections. So uh, the first book I wanted to show you is this one. It's called Designing Infographics and uh, this was a book that I purchased probably five or seven years ago uh, as a way for me to start to become familiar with infographics as a medium. And uh, lately, infographics have been especially popular because of services like Pinterest, uh, where they show up all the time. And infographics are essentially just a way to take an idea and um, express it in a visual way, usually with data, usually with uh, supporting information, and pulling that all together can be kind of tricky, but uh, once you understand how to do it, it's a great way to help people to understand a difficult topic. Another uh, book is uh, Beginning WordPress. And the reason that I uh, show you Beginning WordPress, although I'm not a beginner with WordPress, is that uh, many people today still think that web publishing is magical and <clears throat> that it requires a great deal of effort in order to get a modern, useful, uh, productive website. And my answer is usually, have you heard of WordPress? And uh, I like to start the discussion that way because I can, within an hour or so, uh, get somebody up to speed to the point where they can begin to use uh, WordPress in order to at least publish. And they can do it for free on WordPress.com. But we can go much further and we can uh, talk about how there are many uh, ISPs, web hosts, uh, and um, other services that allow you to use WordPress as a fully functional uh, install of WordPress.org. In other words, the open source version of the software that gives you every flexibility there is in order to um, use that service, including plugins, uh, themes, etc. You can do some of those things on WordPress.com, uh, but um, very often you, you have to buy in to get real functionality. And my advice is, if you're going to do that, uh, make sure that you don't need to exceed the limitations because if you're going to spend money, you might as well spend money for a host and manage that all yourself. On the other hand, using WordPress.com means that you're more secure, your limited functionality is usually enough, and um, it depends on, on what it is that you're trying to do. The third book I want to show you is the book of Inkscape. And the reason that I, uh, this is uh, Dmitry Kasanov, Kersenov. Uh the reason that I bring up that book is because that book was the difference between me being a 
novice, relatively amateur user of Inkscape to becoming a true believer and understander of Inkscape as an alternative to products like Adobe Illustrator. I'm at the point now with Inkscape where uh, literally any visual two-dimensional idea that I see in my mind, as long as it's not mostly photographic but rather graphic, uh, I can do in Inkscape. I think that the tools are there. Uh, it is not always easy to do, but it is certainly possible. I have not run into limitations with Inkscape um, that many detractors would suggest. Uh, those detractors are usually just used to paying for <laughs> Adobe Illustrator <clears throat> or using other products, which I think is fine, but I would argue to the very end that Inkscape is a highly viable, highly powerful uh, piece of software despite its free cost and because of its open source nature. Uh, one of the things that I do very often in my consulting is presentation consulting. And so um, I like to sit down with people and start by saying, we're not going to talk about photo, uh, we're not going to talk about PowerPoint in this presentation, but rather the act of presenting, the act of choosing good images, the act of simplifying your messages in order to really get to the heart of what it is that you're trying to say. And much like I'm doing today, uh, your presentation should really be uh, rather about your ideas than how much you can fit on a slide. And uh, very often slides for me are just a little tiny prompt, a way for me to remember what it is that I want to talk about, and that allows me to talk freely about what I already know, what I've studied, what I've researched. One of the things that I do in my practice is try to focus on uh, web standards uh, rather than proprietary non-standards. Uh, and the reason I do that is because it gives myself and my customers, my clients, my friends, uh, the most flexibility in allowing them to do what it is that they want to do in the future, not only just right now, but um, long after the project is done, if the project was done using standards like XHTML, SQL, uh, PHP, um, SVG, PNG, etc. That means that there is great flexibility. It means that they can move to a proprietary solution that understands those standards or stay with open source solutions that are based on those standards. One of the things I take great pride in in my consulting work is my work with color. <clears throat> and so um, Pantone is an example of a proprietary way of thinking about color, but I have many books on color. Um, and the, the thing about color is that there are many um, misconceptions about color and what color means such as the idea that red equals angry or that blue equals education. My argument is that blue means whatever blue means in the context of whatever it is that you're saying. It means that these three shades of blue or this shade of blue and this shade of green and this sheen and uh, surface treatment will have a certain effect that uh, is amplified by the words that you're using and the imagery that you're using and the other ideas in your presentation. Um, the belief that color equals X is, I think, a misconception and um, one of the things I talk about all the time. Here's a book on the grid. Um, this is a very good book, very old book, uh, probably emerged in the 70s. And it's the idea that within a series of designs, uh, let's say a poster series or a book or a magazine, uh, there is usually an underlying grid structure in order to organize those ideas and in order to um, have some visual continuity between one piece and another, uh, which I think is incredibly important, whether it be a website, which it usually happens in by default, uh, or uh, a series of posters or a series of placards or a series of postcards or whatever the case might be. This is a book 
on the GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. Horrible name for a software application, but absolutely beautiful as an application. Uh, the closest proprietary application to it is Adobe Photoshop. And um, part of the reason that I use open source software is because it's monetarily free. And the reason for that is because I can go to my client or my customer and I can send them a file that they will be able to open with proprietary software. But if they want to be able to work with the file, the work file that I'm working with, it does not cost them anything in order to get that software, download, and install it. And uh, that's particularly important to me. I want to give my customers the most uh, flexibility in being able to work with me in order to get work done. One of my favorite books is this one here, Universal Principles of Design. And uh, what it is is a collection of ideas in design, such as figure ground relationship, the Fibonacci sequence, exposure effect, uh, digital convergence, cognitive dissonance, nature bias. Really beautiful way for me to brainstorm about a new project uh, where a customer wants to get across some particular idea. I usually turn to this book, start to look through and think about which of these principles um, is touched upon by that. Here's a very similar uh, collection of ideas. It's 100 Ideas That Changed Graphic Design. And uh, it focuses on things like uh, loud topography and ornamentation and the clenched fist. You know, clenched fist means something in graphic design. Um, floating heads. You know, if I was to <laughs> remove my torso, uh, and give myself a color background that would have a certain effect and uh, I begin to think about concepts like that as a way to solve a particular graphic design issue because of a book like that. This is perhaps my favorite book. This is uh, Dreyfus's symbol source book and it does things like this. Um, it has grids of symbols that are well used in graphic design and explained in the context of their history. And for me, iconography and symbology is really it. It's part of the reason that I have very hard-edged designs with thick lines. I really like the idea of having an image that's maybe a foot by a foot being able to be shrunk down to an inch by an inch and still be recognizable as that image. Uh, iconography, as I said. So, that should give you some idea of the kinds of things that I want to talk about in this video series. Um, I'm going to refer to the series as the technology and the design in keeping with the other shows in the um, Neckbeards Networks series and I look forward to having more discussions with you probably about one a week. Um, I really appreciate you listening and, and uh, joining me for these talks. Have a great day.